All right, guys, I hope that little hyped up intro song got your blood going like it does mine. I'm going to go ahead and drink to that. Meanwhile, I'm testing out my new audio. Let me know how this new audio sounds. Voodoo child, right on, right on. Sounds great from Washington State. Thank you, Phil Rowe. Thank you, Victoria. Hey, Victoria, I guess this one's not too too late for you, huh? Awesome. Audio sounds great. Rhino from Texas. Thank you, man. Hope you feel better. Your new studio looks awesome. I got pictures of Rhino's new studio today. He's been putting it together. It's pretty, pretty impressive. I'm a little jealous. Let's see here. All right. Yeah, we're going to get into it today. I set aside Saturday and Sunday, and I've told a lot of people that I wasn't going to do anything. I'm not going out. I'm not going out. No out to no out to eat. Don't invite me anywhere. Please let me make it. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I got things to do. Um, a lot of admin stuff to do. And Don and I were taking care of orders. We had to overnight some packages from a publisher to cover more books because a lot more books sold than I was anticipating. And, um, yeah, thank you, Jahara. Thank you, Lexi. See my dragon. I'm glad uh, I went. I went and got this new camera. I've gone through about five or six cameras, guys. I don't have a lot of luck with cameras, even even the real nice, expensive ones, guys. They just it's just not worth it all. I got a whole bunch of studio equipment here. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. it doesn't work. It seems like a two hundred dollar Logitech camera and microphone that I'm using right now. It's all magnetic. It's real nice. It's about two hundred and ten bucks. But it's way better than the the three cameras that I've already tried to use. And this one has nothing but a C-class cord. It just taps right into my, my laptop. I don't have to I don't have to use any of this auxiliary uh material. And you guys say I sound just fine. So I'm just gonna stick with this. It's crazy. So much for buying all this other stuff. Man. So I'm gonna I'm gonna help Dawn with nothing but sales. Uh, she but she's like a beast with that stuff. You know, all many years working for the money man and oil and gas, the CFO. She's got a lot of skill sets, and it just blows my mind how fast she can put these Excel Excel spreadsheets together and all these charts and have all this information, all these sales, who's paid, who who's waiting to pay, all their addresses, uh, uh, posted. She's got a little digital she's got a u.s postal service digital scale in her office where she can literally mail things from her office package it up and just go take it straight straight to the post office and mail it she's far more sophisticated than i am but anyway i went to sleep last night thinking that i'm going to just answer emails all day but that's not what i woke up with on my mind i go to sleep thinking that okay I've got these three presentations set aside for our KXTV, and I'm about to get them out. But uh, they're awesome, back to back, just fiery stuff. And um, I'm thinking, well, I got to get that out this weekend, and I'm going to. And then I'm thinking about all these other other things I have to do, and you know, just inspiration hits you sometimes. The video presentation I'm giving you right now was not a part of the Ogaijian deluge series it was never going to be a part of it all i was going to do was what i was did, did the very first one was easter island showing you in 1687 bc the phoenix phenomenon wiped out easter island and a bunch of pacific islands then i showed you uh, uh part two of the ogaijian uh deluge series the most unknown and widely ignored cataclysm in world history you don't read about it in any modern his history books but it's everywhere in all the books of the ancient world the Ogaijian flood, the flood of Ogaiges, 1687 BC, the year 2208 Annus Mundi, or, or the 2208 Old World Calendar. So I put these two videos out, and then, and then Martin and I did another one, uh, the satellites of Tiwanaku. This is everything else in the, in the, in the, south america central america north america from hawaii all the way down to pacifica the island of yap the carolines uh the ancient basalt city of metallinen uh, included it all they're all destroyed 1687 bc 
I've only covered one hemisphere. I'm my fourth Ogaijian flood video was going to be about all the ancient texts and, and that we're talking about what happened that actually say Ogaijian deluge, that actually say the flood of Ogaijis, that talk about the cataclysm, that talk about what appeared in the sky, how all, every civilization collapsed at the same time, what had happened, what initiated this 25 year darkness. All this was my plan. But when inspiration hits, plans go out the water. You're still got, you still have that video coming. I still have all that data. Most of it I've never even revealed before. It's amazing all the Mediterranean records we have about the Ogaijian deluge and that nobody's talking about it. It's a Phoenix year. But inspiration led me another way. And that's why you got this video. I put this video together in like two hours. I woke up this morning with just overwhelming amount of inspiration just flooding through me went straight to my my computer started looking at stuff and and i knew that i had to do another ogaijian deluge from a totally different perspective i had to do it from their perspective not ours ex post facto looking from the future back into the past at what happened no, inspiration hit me and I knew exactly how I could do this starting in the pre-flood world, starting from the perspective of the civilizations that were developing and growing and the calendars that they were employing or what they knew about the world they lived in and how and why the Ogaijian deluge completely caught the old world by surprise. It shouldn't have been that way. Why did it happen? How did every ancient megalithic building, technolithic construct, constructing engineered societies all get caught by surprise in the month of May, 1687 BC, when they are all descended from civilizations that knew that there were suffering systemic resets. They knew about the vapor canopy collapses that caused the great floods of the capture of Luna when the moon, appear, when the moon appeared. They knew the vapor canopy collapse of 34, 39 BC when Enki appeared in the Anun. They started a calendar for that. They knew 3895 5 BC Adam and Eve reset. They knew of that collapse. Every time a vapor canopy collapses, there's major flooding. We're going to get into that here. They knew about the great flood of Noah, 2239 BC in the month of May. They knew the vapor canopy is this day the sky fell. They knew all this. So having known all of this history, and they were meticulous historians. Remember, these are the civilizations that gave us the Yugas, that gave us the Mayan long count, that gave us the, the, the ancient Olmec calendars, that gave us the day count systems, that gave us the Venus almanacs. These are the systems that used to count, count the turnings of the stars around Alpha Draconis. They were meticulous in their record keeping. How did they all get caught by surprise? And they did. Remember, in the first three Ogaijian deluge presentations, I've already told you guys and showed you where archaeologists have been baffled that all these sites were these megalithic super constructions, gigantic boulders, walls, canal works, dikes, everything built on high elevated ground as if they were building for a flood. All this stuff was, was left in place. The stone heads and busts on Easter Island were found in, in a line from the top of the quarries on the volcano in a line down the road, going down the mountain in a row, all the way to the beach, all the way to, to the shore. And it always baffled his stories. Why? It's like they were, they were marching in line. But no, all work stopped as they were transporting them. And the ones that were still in the quarry, you can see where they're still laying in the quarry in situ. They were never finished. Just like Baalbek has the largest stone block in the world. In situ, it hasn't been detached because it wasn't finished. Instead, what did archaeologists find? They found chisels and hammers and workshops abandoned. Archaeologists dug the dirt and all the mud away and found at the ground level where, where the workshops were, and it's all abandoned. It's as if people ran away instantly. They were scared. And it wasn't just in the Middle East. I showed you in those three videos. That's what happened all throughout the Americas, from North America to South America to Easter Island. They left the quarries and the workshops rapidly. 
what caught them by surprise so bad? Well, you already know. Anybody watching watching Archaics knows the Phoenix phenomenon caught them by surprise. But why were they caught by surprise when they have this long history of meticulously recording all these events, even to the point that each event started another calendar? In each calendar was actually a countdown. How? That's what we're going to answer in this video. Inspiration struck me this morning, and it all became so clear how every civilization speaking totally different languages, working under different mathematical systems, under different calendars, but yet having the same histories, how they could all fall prey to something and all fall victim. They weren't prepared for what, ha what, what happened because they didn't know that year that that event was going to occur because they were convinced they had 48 more years. And that's why they were constructing. That's why all these megalithic metropolises were all being built at the same time on high ground, away from floodplains, with megalithic earthquake-proof cyclopean masonry and building techniques that ensured that their constructions could absorb shock. Guys, inspiration struck me to go ahead and present an entire video from the perspective of the ancients, the ancient engineers, the ancient stargazers, the ancient timekeepers, us back then. This video is from their perspective of century by century up until this event. And by the time I get to this event, you're going to understand exactly how Every civilization in the world got caught flat-footed, thinking they had 48 years when they didn't. So that's what we're going to get into. That's my intro. I'm going to wait for a few more people to stack up in here. Sorry to be overly dramatic, but I'm telling you now, when inspiration strikes me, everybody who's close, all my friends and family, they're close to, they know everything in the world gets tossed out the window. I ride the waves of inspiration because it... It's, it's never failed me. It's never failed me. I may go four, five, six, seven days doing my own thing, but then when that inspiration hits me, I got to listen to it. I got to respond to it. I got to ride that rhythm. And that's what I'm doing today. And this presentation is going to be fantastic. All right, check out this chat. Thank you guys for those donations. Always appreciate it. My two full-time employees, they really appreciate it. Let's see. <laughs> Dawn, I need a coffee. <laughs> hey, face diaper, I got the big one today. Only 810 people in the chat. We must, uh, Saturday, everybody's busy. It's beautiful outside. I get it. I get it. I get it. I had a real good live video the other day. We almost hit 2,000 people in the chat. Or 2,000 people watching all at the same time. That was amazing. That was the day before yesterday. Yeah, I was getting some notes prepared last night, just doing different stuff. And I came across a Billy Carson video. And he was, he was explaining to people how to use their spirit to increase their bank account. Literally, that was the message. I listened to it. I could quote him. Yeah, man got to take these ideas, man, these two-dimensional ideas, and you got to run them through your spirit, man, and build a three-dimensional picture, man, so in 4D time, that money will appear in your bank account. Yeah, man, it's exactly what I heard. What really, what really impressed me, though, was he, he's got 600, he's got 697,000 subs, but he can't get 500 people in the chat. It's crazy. I heard rumors that some people were just buying subs. I ain't never had the money to do that. I just grow organically. Welcome, Prophet 615. You in for a ride? Yeah, <laughs> Jar Lee. So the money can appear in his bank account. Yeah, man. Yeah, man.
Yeah, yeah. I saw somebody asking about Michael Desari on again. Hey, guys. Yeah, I did a really good chat, two-hour chat with Michael Desari on. Um, it was it was it was at, in his venue, uh, unslaved. It was good chat. Now I have my own version from a secondary camera of me talking and him on on the screen, but that's only on our case TV. I'm not putting that on YouTube. That's that's he invited me to his venue, and he's been so he's been so censored and restricted that he's basically narrowed his narrowed his community down to unslaved he doesn't do anything on youtube doesn't do anything so i'm gonna honor that so i'm not i don't i can't just put that on youtube not without his permission but uh those of you who are who are uh subscribed to archaics tv i mean it's on there for you to listen to a lot of people have they like it let's see oh he hasn't even put it up on his yet huh i didn't know that didn't even know. Yeah, for those of you just joining us, I already started straight out the gate laying laying out exactly what, what we're going to present today. We're going to do this from the perspective of who we were 4,800 years ago. And we're going to move forward in time closer to where we are today un until we get to the Ogaijin Deluge. So you guys can understand exactly how the entire world was deceived taught entire world was deceived yeah same thing the same the same thing you get with the jewish calendar today all these people thinking the jewish calendar is old all these people thinking the jewish calendar has substance it means something that people people just don't even realize the jewish calendar is not even in the bible but uh yeah it's it's crazy jewish calendar means nothing absolute fiction just totally made up it lines up with nothing in history at all it's a total fiction Somebody said, what's Tazarian's view on simulation theory? I, I don't know, but um, if you're new to my channel and you're assuming that simulation theory is basically all I put out, then you got a lot to learn here, a lot to learn here. Simulation theory is a personal conclusion based off all the data sets that I cannot reconcile otherwise. It is not something I impose upon you. You don't have to believe it. The archaics data stands alone. It does not need simulation theory. Yeah, it's, let's not confuse the two. Oh, 921 in the chat. We're almost there. Man, I'm so glad my audio is good. 138 check. Thank you, sir. Love that number. Love that number. Yeah, I got up this morning. Dawn asked me what was going on. I said, girl, I'm on fire. I don't know what happened. I woke up with something. I woke up with my spirit vibrating and I'm thinking about something. I gotta go look. I gotta go look at some notes. So, man, two hours later, I came out came out of those notes with a full presentation as you guys know when i do these ogaijian presentations the data set the data is so much to take in i don't expect you to take it in in a single video presentation even if you listen to the video two or three times so i provide free pdf downloads i'm going to put a link in the description box of this video as soon as this video is over where you can go you can download this entire presentation. It's deep. It's going to make sense of the entire ancient world and why they developed all their calendars and why the ancient world that we've been taught is after the 25 year darkness of the Ogaijian deluge in 1687 BC. Because the ancient world that was before 1687 BC that we're going to be talking about was technologically advanced. And it was nothing like after 1687 BC. A whole lot of focus has been put on the great flood of Noah, which was 552 years, a phoenix cycle before the Ogaijin deluge. It was in the month of May in the year 2239 BC. However, we are seeing more and more and more evidence 
that 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 flood, that collapse of the vapor canopy, wasn't near as destructive as the 1687 BC. The first three videos I've already shown you, it was total destruction. It was absolute civilization wipeout. We don't really have that with the 2239 BC. We, we do have scientific verification from many different sources that in about 2240 BC, which is one year variance, about 2240 BC, every old, old Bronze Age uh, civilization collapsed. But that's not a wipeout. We still had many cultures and races that further developed to become mighty nations and empires in the Heliolithic Maritime Empire of the post-technolithic period, which was after the Great Flood of 2239 BC. So for so many hundreds of millions of people to still be here, what we had with the Great Flood of Noah was a great scattering and a great destruction, maybe earthquakes 